Hey everyone, welcome back to the P-Lab, I'm Pierre. Today I'm going to be doing a motherboard comparison for the newly released Ryzen 7 7800X3D. This is the hottest processor on the market right now. It's listed at 449 MSRP. Right now you can probably, you probably can't find it under, I don't know, maybe 500, 550, around there. Um, but prices are coming down and availability is coming up. So, you know, I think there's a lot of people asking the question, what kind of motherboard do I need? What kind of RAM do I need? I've addressed the RAM question in a previous video and I have a link for the video somewhere, either in the video description or on this page somewhere if I can figure out how to do it. But yeah, today I'm gonna be comparing motherboards for the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. The reason I'm focusing on this processor is because it is the new king of gaming CPUs. And the thing I find impressive about its performance is that it can do it with any type of complementary gear. It doesn't really matter what you pair with it because the 3D vCache technology is so powerful, it kind of overrides all the other components in the system. So today I'm gonna show you how much of a difference there is between what we typically call a high-end motherboard versus what we'll call entry-level motherboards and I'm only classifying that by the price because one of these costs $99 and one of these costs $699. You know going into that without any info I would expect that there should be a big difference because there's a huge difference in price there but I'm going to show you exactly what the differences are and if you really need to pay that much to get the max performance out of your gaming chip. So first up, I have the ASRock A620M HDV M2 Plus. This was just released. I believe it's $99 on Newegg. Yeah, that's how much I bought it for. There might be some promotions going on for it right now uh, because it was newly released. But this is pretty much the, the lowest cost motherboard you can buy uh, to run a 7800X3D or any X3D chip or a Ryzen 7000 chip for that matter, okay? Now this is the 120 watt version. There is a 65 watt version. I decided to go with this one because there's a $15 difference and the power rating for the 7800X3D exceeds 65 watts. So I wanted something that could at least support the full power, even if it's considered entry level. So this is my entry level board. Before the A620 was released, the B650M DS3H by Gigabyte was the lowest cost motherboard you could buy for the X3Ds. It was, I believe, $129. And, and you know, it's $130, not that much for a motherboard in the end, but compared to hundred bucks, that's, that's a 30% increase. So when we're talking about trying to keep the cost down, this. I think this is a large step up from $100. Lastly, we have the X670E AORUS Extreme from Gigabyte. This motherboard costs $699. It has all the features, all the bells and whistles, crazy VRM, crazy power delivery, PCIe 5. It's just a really premium board. And I'm gonna show you how much more you get with a board like this compared to boards like these. So stick around, I'm gonna do some comparison, show some stats, and then do a final analysis. And here's the test system I'm running. Right now the B650 is in place. I've got an ID cooling SE214 XT air cooler on there. $20 on Amazon. And just fine. Got T4 Delta RGB sticks, DDR5. Rated at 7200 CL34. I got those when they were first released. They've come down in price now, but for AMD systems, you don't even need to go that high. I'd say at minimum, you can just go with whatever 6000 C30 sticks are available at the lowest price or whatever fits your specific preferences. We've got the 4090 in here. And then I believe this one is running a Samsung 980 Pro. Got an excellent Intel over here. Got the 40, new 4070 hooked up in here. And this is what, I, what I'm using for screen recording at the moment. All right, here's the BIOS of the B650. I still haven't figured out how to screen record the BIOS screen, so I'm gonna use my camera 
If anybody has a hot tip on that, let me know. The things I'm interested in seeing are if the motherboard is able to hit the memory speeds I need. And in all honesty, you don't even need to overclock the memory for X3D systems and games, but it might benefit you in regular, in daily use. On this motherboard, just for testing sake, I pushed it up to 6,000 with the F clock at 2,000, uh, U clock equal to the memory clock. And then the timings are at 30, 48, 48, 96. And I've left the voltage at auto. <clears throat> I believe it defaults to 1.45. You can hit that just fine. I've also gone ahead and applied a negative curve at the maximum value, and I've had no issues booting. I've had no issues in games. I've been running a lot of benches, and I've posted them on my page, as you can see. If you go into I.O. ports, resizable bar is enabled. So in terms of what I need for gaming, those are the features I'm looking for. So that's what I'll be looking at on each of these boards. So I'm going to save and exit. Okay, so now I've got the ASRock A620 BIOS open. I went ahead and set the XMP profile from these sticks and lowered some of the sub timings down to CL30. Resizable bar was enabled as well. I've got my X670 AORUS Extreme BIOS open here. I'm on F7B. I've got the 7800 X3D loaded up with 32 gigs of RAM. I've already set the memory frequency to 6000. And I've also set a negative PBO curve at a value of 30. So that's the maximum value. For memory, I'm running at 6000. CL30. Resizable bar is enabled. And we're gonna go ahead and load up. So I loaded up streets in 4K, changed the AI amount to high, enabled bosses, and this should crank up the CPU usage a good bit and give us an idea of how each motherboard handles the processor. I use my typical bench settings as you can see here and I'm gonna roll the side-by-side -side footage now. Okay, let's look at the FPS stats. The A620 and X670E, I'm going to call them even. I'm just going to chalk up the differences to Tarkov RNG. B650, I don't know why the numbers are so much higher. Again, it could be Tarkov RNG. It did look like it was boosting a little higher on the B650, so maybe I have some BIOS issues, I don't know. But in terms of performance, I'm going to say they're still all in the same ballpark. I think they can all probably hit the same numbers as the B650. Looking at the CPU stats, they're pretty much identical. So we don't really need to review anything here. 
the power, usage, and temp were pretty much all the same on all three boards. On the GPU stats, they were all pretty much equal as well. Power hovering around 315, 320, usage around 66%, temps around 60. So in conclusion, the X3D is just OP. You don't even need to get a high-end motherboard or high-end RAM to get the most out of it. There is a $600 difference between two of these motherboards in this comparison, and I don't think there's a $600 performance difference. Now, if you value the other features that these motherboards do offer, like extra connectivity or I.O. ports and things like that, or you value having extra options on your motherboard, whatever your preference is. But in terms of performance, you don't need to go any further than what is traditionally considered entry level. Feel free to pick and choose your options from there. So I hope this little comparison I did was informative and really displayed why I'm still so amazed by the X3D technology. Thanks for watching and have a great day.